guys, welcome to the Funky Marketing Show. Uh, I'm glad you're here one more time. Uh, today we are hosting a really interesting guest, somebody that I've been following uh, a while on LinkedIn. We've been interacting back and forth and I didn't see much of his content recently. So I decided, okay, let's invite the man to the podcast and hear what he's been up to, what he's been doing. Uh, so today uh, with me is is Chris, uh, and if I can sum up what he's doing, like he's actually happy helping uh, business owners. All of them are busy to uh, you know to better learn and know content uh, content marketing through the coaching and also through laser targeted ghost writing because you know they don't have time uh, sometimes to do it on on their own and. Uh, so Chris, welcome to the show. And, uh, I gotta ask you right away, like, uh, how good are you at psychology? Cause I guess that's the <laughs> fundamental part of coaching. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I have a bachelor's in psychology. Uh, that was actually what I got my degree in an undergrad and thought I was going to go on and, and use that, uh, maybe in the world of sports psychology, cause I played basketball in college and thought I would, uh, Kind of go into the sports industry and actually got a master's in sports management with that intention as well and worked in that world for a while and realized it's not nearly as glamorous as uh the pictures painted <laughs> for it to be and uh, made a shift <laughs> so. yeah interesting i forgot about that i think we we commented on on the basketball sometimes because i also play basketball and this morning i was complaining that you know like everything is gray outside at least the rain <laughs> stopped but like Everything hurts because I've been playing basketball last night. It's, you know, 10 to 11 uh, p.m., uh, you know, uh, date. And, yeah. like, everything will be okay. And it's time for me to say, look, I was great, but I sucked. Actually, all of us <laughs> sucked. And so I have no excuse. And that's the motivation for today. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played in a long time. Uh, I Man, it's been five, six years probably. Um, I was playing in a rec league here, uh, kind of where I live and I caught an elbow and got a, you know, a big cut in my forehead. And my wife met me at the mm. emergency room and was like, you're done. Nice. That's the last time you're playing. <laughs> so, that was the end of that. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting story. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so lots of uh, you're doing lots of interesting things that I like to talk about. So I think it's going to be great. We're going to go back and forth on some of the topics. But uh, first of all, uh, while I was going through your post in your profile um, yesterday and this morning, uh, I, I saw that you have a specific uh, format in where you are posting on LinkedIn. So so you know you catch. Uh, the number of characters and the line that is over there and it's just enough for people to click and go to see more because if guys you are not aware see more is one of the most important CTAs over there on LinkedIn so let's go a little bit into into formatting the importance of the intro and all those other stuff yeah I think of it as like hook body and call to action right like those are the three more most important parts of any post and a hook especially in a text post you have that first five lines before the see more pops up. And I think a lot of the mistakes I see really often, a lot of times when people write that intro uh, to kick things off is they write it more than five lines. And so it gets broken up in the middle somewhere and the see more is there and it's kind of seems strange. And you're not really using the hook to grab somebody's attention to convince them to continue reading. It's just kind of a jumble <laughs> there in the, in the beginning. So you have to be really intentional about that first five lines if it's a text post. If it's like a video or you're sharing like a GIF or an image and you're telling a story about that, it's three lines. So it's actually shorter. So you have to get to the point faster. Um, so that's something that's really important to keep in mind for the initial hook is you want to grab somebody's attention in that first five lines. You want to keep actually also keep those lines as short as possible if you can. Uh, if you look at the difference between desktop and mobile, it may look like five lines. That, that's where it happens. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And then you get to mobile and it's chunked up. And then the Seymour happens somewhere in the middle because of the character count. So I would encourage everybody to work really, really hard on that first five lines to keep them short. 
and like immediately hook people and grab their attention because uh, that's what encourages somebody to keep reading. Yeah, and, and it's also like what you want to do with uh, with those fir first lines. You you actually want to grab people's attention in. Yeah. It can happen in a different phase. Like I remember back in, it was 2016, 17, when Josh Fetcher actually started with broetry or however yeah, yeah. it's called. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah and yeah, and the the. <laughs> What's, what was behind it is like, you can piss them off, you can make them cry, but just don't make them happy because it's, <laughs> it's not something that you want. And like in, in the body, you can get to it and you can get them to the right path. If they are pissed, they, they won't be pissed again. And you know, right. those kind of things, but make them react and show some stronger emotions. And uh, you know, what's, what I'm also seeing and what's kind of interesting is that people use this first part to kind of go slow. Mm -hmm. You know, and Not then they leave dance. everything for the body, but yep. lots of lots of people won't ever get to read that part. Yeah, I mean, if you're not convincing me, if you're not drawing some kind of, of emotion out of me or, or telling me that I need to spend my time reading the rest of the post by what you're giving me early, I'm just going to leave or I'm going to keep scrolling and keep going. Got to grab my attention and convince me because, you know, the part of what we talk about all the time is how short everybody's attention spans are. Now, our attention span, because social media is, what, 15, 20 seconds, you've got to hook me. If you don't do that, then it's your loss, you know, if you don't do a good enough job in those first few lines. So, yeah, yeah it's really and, important. And, and especially now when, you know, like, customer's uh, journey is changing and people want to get everything in the feed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to format your content the way so so they actually want to consume it because like i see i don't know if you see i see a lots of ads of of people uh companies promoting like blog posts but they use one sentence and it's the first sentence from the blog nothing else <laughs> like and i was like why <laughs> yeah. i'm amazed at some of the formatting things that i see you know like the thing with people sharing 20, 30 hashtags in a post and the post is two or three lines long. What are you doing? Like that immediately looks like spam. You know, I'm just thinking red flags all over the place. Like, well, it's just, it's a carryover from Instagram. I feel like a yeah. very strange one. Um, but that's a big one. And then like the, I've talked about this with several people, but the mass tagging thing, like when you, somebody does a post and tags like 50 people to try to get somebody to respond. Yeah, that, that, worked, that worked in the past. That's why they are doing it. <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy. Like, if I'm included in a huge tag pool like that, I'm thinking you just want to hear from anybody. Like, you don't care to hear from me. You just want, to want somebody to interact with your content. <laughs> I don't really care who it is. Anybody. You know? Yeah, I don't know if you, you, you've you read the the recent report from uh, from Richard Van der Bloom. And one of the things he said is, like, if you tag people and then don't react, like, your post is going to go down. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Because, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, so so anyway, I, I think um, at least for me and uh, for what we do with the clients, uh, the one of the most important parts of LinkedIn becomes who are we connected with, because uh, yeah. it transferred to uh, who is engaging with us, and sure. uh, you know if. Uh, we go like, okay, we are posting now, but who are we connecting with? Lots of companies would go with the connecting right into the search and typing their ICP role in the company, you know, and this is where they're making mistakes because lots of those people will never ever see the request or anything right. else. Right. How do you do it? What's, what's your approach to it? very intentional about it um you know i typically if some i have the follow button first and foremost on my profile so i ask that people follow me first before we connect because i want to see if they're really like locked in uh, to my content and they're there with me um and if that's the case then i'll follow them back you know and then ask a, a couple of days later i'll reach out you know with a connection request and um you know basically try to establish that connection and make sure, um, you know, that we're kind of giving back and forth. And, and once we, once we have that, I'll actually try to take it to the next level and see if people are willing to have a conversation with me offline. Uh, so anybody that I, that accepts a connection request, I'll say, okay, let's chat for 15, 20 minutes on a call. About 25% of the people I reach out to do that. But it, every time those calls turn into 
like really mutually beneficial engagement relationships where we're engaging on each other's content. And sometimes they turn into leads. Um, that's just my process. I'm very intentional about it. And like when I go out and comment on other people's content, it's not always necessarily somebody I see as a potential client. It could be somebody I see as, you know, like having the ability to collaborate with at some point down the line. Um, so I kind of think about it in a couple different ways, but I tend to play in the same couple of spaces, um, you know, in terms of where I'm comfortable commenting and adding value to the conversations. And I stick with those. I'll experiment a little bit, um, but it's pretty consistent. You know, it stays, stays similar <laughs> day by day. Yeah. Do, do you catch like a uh, specific hashtag, specific topics and go into the, the recent posts? I start with the recent of my own feed and to just see like who in my feed is, is doing what they're doing. Um, we talked a little bit about this offline. I'm sure we'll talk about it, but that's changed as I've taken out a lot of connections. <laughs> I call it a lot of my connections intentionally for that reason. Um, but I also spend a lot of time in like hashtag solopreneur and founders and coaching and personal branding and personal development because those all fit pretty closely to my, my client base. And um, yeah, try to maintain a presence there where I'm commenting on the people that are creating good content. There's a lot of people creating content in those feeds the people yeah. that are actually creating well-formatted, intelligent content, I'll, that's the content I'll interact with. Yeah, I, I wish it's the same as me analyzing like B2B CEOs and C-level executives content. It's not, it's totally opposite of what you're saying. Like there are, <laughs> there are trucks, there are cats, there are dolphins, whales, <laughs> all kinds of stuff over there, but just not the things that they need to share. Yeah. But, you know. That's why I know that there's a, a need for coaching because <laughs> I see so many people just not treating it correctly. And it's I th it's not for lack of desire to create it and like have a voice. I just think it's for lack of understanding of really what is like strong, impactful content versus not. You know, there's a yeah, exa there. exactly. I think I think they are they are looking at the, you know, especially those that are, uh, you know, mid age uh, and just building building a company or coming to the social media from, uh, from, you know, uh, winning offline yeah. and they look at the executives who, uh, are, uh, you know, running a huge companies and they don't realize that the engagement and the likes and followers on their profiles is because the company is huge. Yeah. It has <laughs> hundred thousand people working in the company and <laughs> they get, they get featured in the LinkedIn news all the yeah. times. And you know those kind of things uh but you know so one thing one thing i will add uh what we what uh we do a little bit differently is uh you know we tend to find like uh let's say five to ten people who we call like let's call them influencers however people that uh you know that are well respected in the space and that have engagement on their post. So yeah. basically we want to get those people to steal them to come to yes, engage with our sure. post because yeah. it's, uh, it's the shortcut for, you know, getting them from minus zero to, to engage <laughs> right. when they're already engaged, you know, like it's the content, is it better than what they are engaging with? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. They will comment on our post. Yeah. Uh, and also like, uh, I send uh message to all of my connections but i usually do it like uh i wait at least two weeks for them to consume the content so they know what i'm all about and you know yeah. and uh sometimes i just say you know hey just wanted to drop a line and say hi like yeah. literally literally that uh like yeah it happens like a month ago uh i got the respond like when can we talk we need a vendor like, oh, I was wow. like, that, that, was too, that was too soon. <laughs> so I, 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 I asked for the process, you know, why did yeah. she decide? And she did, said, okay, look, we really needed the vendor. And, <laughs> you know, we connected and I check out your profile. I saw that yeah. mutual connections are relevant people. I saw who you have on the podcast. That's it. Let's talk. Nice. That's awesome. But uh, I wish that would happen more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh okay so um uh, let's go and talk a little bit about the connection so you you start growing start connecting with people and then you decided you know to call it down what are the reasons behind it 
I got to like 2100 connections um over the course of time and that's where i was sitting and that goes all the way back man i don't know eight years ten years something like that you know i back in the days when i wasn't really using linkedin the way that i use it now using it like how most people do is just a place to store a resume or search for jobs in between jobs and you know i just had this realization over the weekend i don't recognize half the names that i'm seeing in my feed like who are these people like, I don't know these people. We've never really connected. We've never really engaged. They're obviously not a part of my core community. Uh, I've got to get back to that because I felt like, you know, the reason why my content yes. was struggling a little bit, with, you know, we know, we all know there's been algorithm updates recently. And I feel like, you know, the reason why my content was flatlining a little bit there is just like you said, you haven't seen my content in a long time. I actually had people DMing me saying, are you, you okay? Like, <laughs> I haven't seen your content in a long time. Is everything all right? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. You know, but I, you know, they were telling me straight up, like, I'm not seeing your content. And that was concerning to me, you know? So I was just like, okay, well, I've got to fix this. You know, took those 2,100 connections down to like 700. <laughs> so I just spent three hours. Like, I don't know who that is. We've never interacted, remove connection, unfollow. And just did it and did it, did it. And it was kind of scary as I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, really pairing my community down and uh you know that could hurt it it cut my followers by like a thousand but the funny effect i wrote a post about it and said what i was doing and all these people chimed in and were like yeah i'm thinking of doing the same thing or i just did it i'm seeing a big difference that's a good idea sounds risky like everybody had different, different opinions on it but i don't know it's working for me like i'm seeing people again that i want to see um, it's easier to like spend the time in my feed to do my interaction work each day. I'm not having to fish or like go specifically to people's profiles to interact, which is so time consuming. Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like it was worth it. You know, yeah, it was a risk, but I lost the followers, but I really don't care. I'd rather have fewer engaged followers than a ton of people that I'd have no idea who they are, you know? So, yeah. Um, I mean, you you, you got to low it down and you got to have uh, some kind of, you know, bet how you are narrowing down who you are connecting with. Yeah. So, like, you know, I am always telling uh, Yag, uh, you know, like, Yag, sorry, but I I reject people from, from India, from Pakistan, you know, from those countries, because unfortunately, there are a lot of people who just want to spam you with, with something yeah. over there. And, uh, you know, I love you, you are from India, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that's how, how it happens. Uh, but I want to give an example, like, um, before I started funky marketing, I was working in an agency that is based in Serbia. And so I had lots of connections from Serbia and I think I was the most active guy on LinkedIn from there. And I was wondering, you know, like before that I work in a Canadian based agency and startups and those companies, and I, I have seen people that write in English in my feed. But when I start adding people from Serbia, like I only saw people writing in Serbian in the feed. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and Serbian isn't the official language that's recognized by LinkedIn. So uh, <laughs> you cannot switch it up. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I tried out lots of things. First, like I changed the location and okay, I got some events to like, you know, join for a coffee in Austin or, uh, meet somebody in Berlin or whatever it is, <laughs> but they didn't, uh, you know, influence uh, what I'm seeing in the, in the feed. Uh, then I realized, okay, let me try to, uh, you know, to eliminate people from Serbia. So I have deleted, like I had 9,000 connections at the time. So I deleted three. Oh, wow. Uh, and it didn't help. <laughs> I just lost them. <laughs> what, what helped is when I actually started to connecting more with people who are, are English native, you know, yeah. back in, in from the UK, from uh, Australia, US, wherever. Sure. And they become the majority. So that change things. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but uh, still up to this day, I, I try to send to every everyone at least a message or something yeah. like that. Because it was like, you know, when I started funky marketing, I already had like nine, then, then 6,000 connections and I sent everybody a message. That's great. And you know, it, it's, it sparks, uh, things, things starts happening and, you know, 
So, uh, and also I got a feedback for my content. I don't know if you get it, probably yes, but this is one of the, the biggest outcomes for me out of DMing people because I just say hi and they say, your content is great. Yeah. <laughs> or like I've been following you for six months and you know, yeah. and you, you never see those people. Yeah. You know, I, I've started making that argument recently. Like everybody like puts lurkers down so much. There's, you know, the notion of creators versus lurkers, right? And lurkers are people that aren't creating any content. They're kind of hiding out in the backgrounds. Of my six ghostwriting clients right now, four of them never interacted with one piece of my content. Never. Not one time. Literally, like just emerged from the shadows, sent me a DM one day. It's like, I've been watching you for four months, five months. Let's talk. It's like because they, it goes from recognition of like the content you create and how you tell your story to curiosity about what you do and that's the big misassumption is and why i think vanity metrics are pointless because you know views and all that stuff that's great but a lot of that's the echo chamber effect where we're all just liking each other and lifting each other up that's not what turns into business what turns into business is people watching you <laughs> in the shadows and one day they come out and they're like hey uh, I've been watching you for a long time. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, and you just need one. You yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just every yeah. now and then. <laughs> so. That's it. So so tell me, tell me, uh, I'm interested to know like what's your routine related to the to the LinkedIn? Because I'm trying to create uh sort of a routine for me. I have this, you know, like when I'm posting, uh, you know, trying to engage, but nothing like specific. So yeah. when I when I when I see that somebody has something specific, I want to know about it. <laughs> I do the same thing for myself that I do for my clients every day. Uh, you know, some of my ghostwriting clients I create content for every day, like every business day, and others I create for content for on like three days a week. Um, but the pattern for myself is the same six days a week. You know, I don't post on Saturdays typically, so. My process always is to start a timer for 30 minutes and I go in and I leave value added comments in the feeds that we were talking about, uh, either in the hashtag feeds or by, you know, recent in my own feed and um, just leave those comments for 30 minutes and just do that. You know, all other tabs are closed. <laughs> I'm just leaving comments. I believe very much in that reciprocal engagement because when you do that, a lot of those people will come right back and engage on my content as soon as I post it. So I start by everybody that engaged <clears throat> with the post from the previous day. Mm -hmm. So if I have 15 people like a post the previous day, I just automatically open all their profiles, go to most recent, whatever post they did recently, I interact on that post. I just give that engagement right back. And then I go from there into my feeds and kind of have my process. But pretty much at that 30 minute mark, I have the content ready and teed up to go um, from there. And we'll straight up just post whatever I have ready. If it's something new, uh, I'll do that. If it's a video that I've had ready to share. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'm not afraid to republish content. You know, I republish stuff that succeeds. I'll republish it two, three months later. Um, why not? <laughs> if it did well once, I'm going to do it again. I, I, I closed four, four clients in, in January when I didn't work at all. I didn't post a single thing. I just republished. republished. <laughs> That's great. Love <laughs> yeah. it. Love it. Um, but yeah, that's my process. So I do that same 30 minutes for myself. And I do that same exact thing for each of my clients. So 30 minutes interacting as them in the feed, you know, then post. And then at the end of the day, I do all that in the morning. So I try to get it done in that, in a, like a central time block um, between like 730 central and like 10 central typically. Um, so it hits all the time zones in the U.S. And uh, yeah, then I come back at the end of the day and kind of see what comments happen during the day and make sure to respond to those on the posts. Um, you know, and now that LinkedIn's stretching out uh, shelf life for posts, a lot of times there's comments on posts from two, three days before that I have to go back in and, and respond to those. But that's that's kind of my typical pattern day by day. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I guess I was just too lazy to do that. But it took me a long it's, time to get there. I was yeah, <laughs> to make it consistent. So yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean, if I need to define creating relationship, that would be it. So yeah, that's that's a great thing to hear, and I think uh, everybody listening will have something something out of it. Uh, I guess you can go back and just 
write down the step by step that that Chris just gave you how to how to you know engage and how to approach your LinkedIn on a daily level. Um, so let's go. We talked about all the different stuff. So you start posting, then you connect with people, then you create the daily routine. But what happens when you know you go up and everything go up and you're happy and then it just goes flat one day? Yeah, I think that's where experimentation comes in. You know, if you're going to be successful doing this long term, you got to be ready to experiment and do it, do it a lot. Um, I'm not afraid to just completely like do a week's worth of video. Um, like last week, all I did was videos. Like I'm not going to do any text posts. I'm going to try a week worth of videos, see what happens. Did pretty well. You know, kind of pulled things back up. You know, uh, profile views went back up. Um, I play with put like post size a lot. You know, they give us five lines of the hook. I'll do a five line post. That's it. Um, I, you'll see some people do two line posts. <laughs> even. Mm -hmm. I mean, to take it to the next level, like I'm just going to play around with different things and see what happens and see what resonates with people. Um, one week I might mix in more republishes than new content and just like really lean heavily on high performers, especially the kind of feeling that dip happen. I'm going to lean back on stuff. I know it's done well in the past to see if it can give me a boost. So it's just always, always about experimentation. I mean, you just have to, you have to keep experimenting and not get upset at the lows and not get too happy with the highs. You know, I've talked a lot about existing yes. in the, the world of the middle grounds. Like the more you can live there, the better your life's going to be. Uh, Cause there's going to be both. <laughs> so, you know. Exactly. I mean, that, that's why one of the reasons I mentioned psychology at the start, cause like, we don't work with solopreneurs that much these days, but we work with, with companies when we create like the hub inside the company, when, you know, they got to interact with each other, start creating things, you know, go from personal brands and then align with a company brand. And like psychology is everything here. So they, because they, they, they will go through, you know, encouragement to start posting, then they will get some comments some hate ones, some good ones, you know, <laughs> they need support to go through all of that. Right. And, you know, and then at the end comes this, this moment when everything goes flat and, you know, they, they need support to actually, you know, try to experiment with some of the things. Yeah. And it's, it's frustrating when, when things fall flat, when you, when it's been going well, cause you're like, okay, well, what's changed? You know, some of the, I, I was at my peak of views and engagement before this last update, whatever happens. And it was like, just, whew. but now I'm like figuring out how to like climb back up the mountain, I guess. And like, what's going on. And I don't know. It's interesting. I don't, I don't blame stuff on the algorithm very often, but it's in the numbers. So no doubt about it. Like my view count was down by 50% in, in September. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know me. I have two months of going really high, then it goes a little bit down, then it goes up again. And I started, yeah. you know, uh, I stopped paying attention to it. But what's good, I don't know if you had a chance to, to talk to somebody like LinkedIn. Uh, people from LinkedIn started to reach out to creators, yep. and yep. you know, to kind of enable them and help them reach their goals. Mm -hmm. I don't know, the guy asked me, like, what are my two goals in for the for the next six months? How can I help you establish that that didn't happen on any other platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've got this creator accelerator going on and actually today's the deadline. So if anybody wants to get in on that, get your application in. Um, I'm saying that to myself. Sorry. I remember <laughs> I to shoot the video for mine and get it out the door. Uh, but they're obviously starting to think about, you know, how to really activate people that are, that are active and like encourage that behavior even more and help people take it to the next level. So I think that's good. Um, yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, like what I really appreciate is that, you know, the guy from LinkedIn told me, we know we're late. We are damn late, but now I joined the company. Now we're going to change that. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they have the recognition, I guess. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I don't know. I'm curious if it, you know, I, I think all of it's leading toward monetized content at some point. I mean, I just yeah, don't, don't, don't see how that's not the end result. And I think that's going to be an interesting frontier for all of us as creators to cross um, when we get there. It's coming. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, let's get into the topic, which is, I guess, the next step 
for you as well, you know, like, and I saw that you talk a little bit about it. So I wanted to, to kind of tackle that one uh, as well. You know, how does the shift from being an operating owner uh, goes to an owning operator? How does yeah. the shift happen? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, operating owner is very much what I consider myself at this point. Like I've got a lot of executional work every day, which I love. You know, I, I really enjoy working with my clients and I like being in the weeds and and creating content for them and working in that element of ghostwriting. But I don't want that to be the core of my business forever. I want there to be a balance. So starting to think a lot more about what I can build that's a little bit more hands off. Right. Um, you know, is it group coaching programs? Is it um you know, it was like power hour or VIP day type, you know, more transactional brand building where I work with you for one day. And that's what we do. And you come back later if you want, you know, to, to like kind of more of a coaching relationship, trying to bring on some coaching clients. So really, I'm just thinking about it in terms of creating balance, because uh, the more stuff that's a little less executional and, and doesn't require as heavy a lift, I think I'll be able to scale um, at some point. And I'm not one of these people that wants to have an eight, you know, eight figure business out of what I'm doing. I mean, that's not my goal. My goal is, is time freedom primarily as I worked in the corporate world for a long time. And so, you know, time freedom is what matters to me and that's what I'm pushing toward. So I'm just trying to think about like, how do I pull back from the executional and make things a little bit more transactional, open up that gray area where I can bring on an intern or two or a part-time person to help me with a lot of the things that I'm looking at this to-do list. It's a mile long that I can't ever touch because, you know, we talked yeah. about it offline a little bit. I don't have the time flat out. Um, so how can I, how can you create that balance so you can open up that time to think about the long-term sustainable growth of the business rather than just being in the weeds, you know, um, that's a big difference. I think. Exactly. Like I think I'm, I'm dealing with that just, maybe on, a, on another level because I have like a small team. But, you know, I realized that the guy that I have uh, had here, which was, uh, you know, the one which my right hand is basically the copy of me. And I realized <laughs> that I need somebody else who can, you know, who who will be better, you know, in, in managing the team, those kind of things. So yeah. I can go and, and actually, you know, think of the strategies, yeah. think creatively, and grow the company basically right. i need somebody to to manage take care of the of the people and the clients yeah in at one hand so uh even if you have a small team you know you need that somebody and it's hard to find those people of course yeah it's uh and you know it's also deciding what am i willing to offload <laughs> what am i willing to delegate i'm a little bit of a control freak in that aspect like i built my business in a very particular way to where it is now, what am I willing to let other people do and trust that they'll do a good job with? And I won't yeah, have to micromanage, you know, uh, that I micromanaged along for a long time. I don't want to do it anymore. So like, yeah, what, yeah, can yeah. I, what can that's I trust? It's always, always a headache. Yeah. So that's, I, uh, what was uh, interesting, like I turned out into a guy who like, if I delegate, I delegate it all straight away and uh you know you can either surprise me which happen more often than disappoint me yeah. uh you know if you if you disappoint me and fail you know i will i will get back to it and do it as i would do it if you are not here so right. that's not not an issue <laughs> but if you surprise me then it's good for the both sides right. and and it means that you know i gave you trust yeah. by the way but uh but you know like uh at one moment i realized okay i'm delegating this even even too much because i delegate you are responsible for that i don't care about it you know just <laughs> let me know when it when it's done or, or, or what's the next step or what's the next yeah, thing for sure yeah there's a lot of nuances here to think about yeah and you know like who are the who are the people that you trust to work with you also like i my gut instinct, you know, university, I live in Austin, Texas, and the University of Texas is here. There's 60,000 students here, a lot of very capable students. It's a very difficult university to get into. And so most everybody is pretty intelligent. I've had some bad experiences with interns from there in the past, though. So like as much as I would like to just go get interns from the university, 
I hesitate a little because I'm not 100% certain that they'll be able to handle the work that I need handled. But at the same time, I don't know that I want to go hire somebody um, to bring on like 10, 15 hours a week and be thinking that they might might be looking for a full time job and they're just kind of taking my money to pass yeah. the time. So like, <laughs> where's the uh, where's the middle ground, right? Like, how do you find somebody that you know is in with you uh, for the right reasons? Um, yeah, I think VA might be uh, a good a good fit. Thought about that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, like for, for us, I tried all kind of things, like not many people here in Serbia have experience in SaaS, for example. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if they have experience in marketing, they don't have that big of experience in uh, in a background. So in measurement, you know, measuring yeah. things, right. knowing how to how to, uh, you know, go and do uh, advanced report in, in G analytics and even in the CRM that's like. Yeah. another level uh so but on the other hand like if i'm gonna hire somebody from the us it's like basic salary in the us it's the high salary here so <laughs> it, it's another yeah. headache yeah and you go on and on but i mean that's why we are entrepreneurs you know we solve right. those problems one by one that's right that's right um okay so uh one of the topics that i like to talk a lot uh and i realized that you love it too it's the storytelling yeah you know I like the importance of the good story and where can we find them actually you know like uh yesterday i had i had on the show michael phillips who like yeah. I found the, the easiest guy to to get the story like he was playing sax he uh <laughs> he's weightlifting he uh was in sales now he's in marketing uh and he's a bit of a comedian like yeah okay but most of people have neither of those things <laughs> yeah i think you just figure out uh what's unique about your story about your history you know for me it's growing up in west texas you know west texas is pretty much um you know it's really removed from everything else like you know i grew up in a city of like 150,000 people but the closest really big city is like five five hours away so it's kind of just out there in the in the middle of nowhere to some extent there's a lot that comes with that like i grew up with a very like with imposter syndrome like baked into my bones pretty much like um everybody pretty much that i know that grew up there feels the same way we all kind of yeah have this assumption that like oh you know you're, you kind of look down on yourself. It's part about the geography. It's part about other influences that I won't go into a lot of detail about. But I mean, that's kind of my history. So I grew up with that and like had to work my way out of it. But I was an athlete. You know, I played sports at a high level. I played college basketball. So a lot of the, you know, my life experiences come from sports and what I learned from that, uh, both positive and negative. And a lot of that, you know, informs uh, my life. Um, one of the things I talk a lot about is I moved something like 12, 13 times between the point, the time I was like 25 and, and like 28, um, moving just around, like trying to think mm -hmm. grass is greener, taking new jobs, moving to a new place. Oh, this will be better. Never was, you know, it's always like, uh, wherever you go, there you are. Uh, you know, so my problems just followed me wherever I moved. Um, so all those things informed, you know, kind of, my voice and the way that I sound on social media. I think a lot of I'm friendly generally uh, in terms of my tone, but there are, t there are times when I'm going to speak my mind. I'm just going to say, OK, here's what I've experienced. This is the way I see it. If you agree with me? That's great. If not, I understand and state your case, you know. Yeah, um, like the, 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 the good guy actually has a voice, you yeah. know, like and <laughs> has an, an attitude, he has something right. that, that, you know, he cares about. Yeah, and I'm not afraid to, you know, to be contrarian every now and then. I'm not going to be controversial controversial for its own sake. I see people do that where they're just always kind of playing devil's advocate. And, you know, if there's like a, a common uh, theme that we all agree upon, they'll just go in the opposite direction yeah, yeah, just yeah, because. Yeah. And that's, that's silly to me. Like, it doesn't serve a purpose. But if I have a different take on something, I'll, you know, I'll share it and see how people react. Yeah, I, I find myself a lot in 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 your story. <laughs> like, um, you know, I'm also from the small city uh, and 
you know, imposter syndrome is here for all the time, but like, uh, I'm not going to go into details, but there is one thing that uh, a friend of mine from, from high school told me now when we, we had like 15 years university of, uh, since we finished the high school and we didn't see each other for a long time. And he said, I'm following you on Instagram and uh, like, uh, you are somebody that wasn't, you know, you were talkative, uh, you know, but, uh, you became a guy who is using that to his advantage because he found out, you know, the benefits of speaking those things out. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, and, and I see it goes well for you. I say, okay, <laughs> I didn't have this perspective of me, but you know. <laughs> it's always interesting to hear that from other people, uh, what you don't see in yourself, you know, and I think it happens. The more visible you get, the more people are willing to talk, talk about it and tell you about it. So. Yeah, and, and I think the, the conclusion of this is that, uh, you know, uh, we all have some specific moments that maybe we don't realize that they are interesting or they yeah. can be a story, uh, right. but other people think uh, completely opposite. Like I always uh, like to use this small example, like if I apply for a job and you got the job, you have a story to tell that is interesting to me, you yeah. know, because you got the job, you know the way. Yeah. And there's levels. I think that, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the better teachers that I've found on LinkedIn that teach about how to build your brand and teach about strategy, talk about levels. Like no matter where you are, there's somebody that's much farther along than you are and from whom you can learn. And there's somebody that's just getting started that's watching you and learning from you. Uh, so again, that ties back to vanity metrics and never make the assumption that people aren't watching because they're watching on both sides. You know, I've been invited to some live streams and podcasts like, from people I would have never thought possible who I thought were way, 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 you know, out of my, <laughs> out of my sphere and vice versa. You know, I've invited them and I never thought they would accept and they did. So you just never really know what people are thinking about you until you reach out and, and find out, you know, you make the assumptions about it, but you don't really know until you have the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how it happens. I mean, uh, I reached out recently to lots of people that I consider interesting, you know, I realize, okay, some of them would never accept or maybe wouldn't even, you know, see my invite to be a guest yeah. in the podcast. Like, uh, I reach out to the game, the rapper, oh, yeah. I, I reach out to Will Smith. I reach out to, oh, Rory, nice. to Rory Sutherland, okay. uh, like Peter McKinnon, like Rory, Rory sold message. Rory came to the show. Like that's really? okay. That's cool. Yeah, 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 and he nice. was actually great. Like we we talked for a hour and a half or something like oh, that's that. That's cool. Uh, even outside of the recordings. Yeah, you know, I, like some of my inspirations in the last few years are guys like Jamal Marshall and Travis Lachner. You know, Travis especially in terms of live streaming. I mean, no, I don't think anybody really does it better than Travis. So I've been following him for a long time, and I invited him on. He's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> surprised me i thought he'd be like nah i'm too busy here like just ignore me and you know yeah yeah i guess know. i guess you all the other know. people will also accept if they see the message that's just it's yeah, sometimes yeah. sometimes because it's just too nosy out there and they don't see the message right yeah. talking about other people dan moat says Dang. what's up chris <laughs> Dan's awesome i enjoy Dan's uh, content a lot really good stuff yeah, I, I have no idea who Dan is, but uh, if I see that we, are, that we are connected and that I have no idea who the guy is, then, you know, it's my fault or LinkedIn's algorithm. So I'll take <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Good follow for sure. Uh, okay. For the end, I have one topic which is uh, kind of interesting and I think people go back and forth with it, uh, you know, especially on LinkedIn. Like, do we have a community or we do only have followers and i think that's that's really interesting and i think everybody has an angle to to talk about the topic it's up to you um is the way that i think about it which you want you have followers if you're just passive and people that are following you and that you know that are connected to you they're just followers if you if, if you don't take that next step you know the thing that i hear constantly taught here which on for linkedin which is Half truth is if you're consistent, you create content consistently, everything will just come together. That happens for like four or five influencers that were here eight years yeah. ago. That's just not the way things work. If you're consistent and you tie that in with intentional relationship building, 
where you intentionally are building relationships with people in your community, then your followers become your community. If you don't take that intentional relationship building step and you just throw content out there, then you just have followers. I think that's the difference. That's the way I see it. Um, not to say that one of those followers may not occasionally turn into a lead, but they're much more likely to become, you know, part of your business or a more valued relationship if you take the next step, but you have to. You know, I have yes. some clients that are willing to do that and activate that and do what I do and I'm not saying my process is 100% correct, but it works for me. I offer the same process to them, offer them to, to take advantage of it. Some do, some don't. And I'll, I'll be honest that pretty much everybody that does <laughs> has more <laughs> leads coming through because they're they're doing, you know, they're really taking that next step. So it just depends. Yeah. That's why I say yeah. that's a relationship. Agree. I mean, it's you need to to go. You know, I always call that because we are now rebranding funk marketing and everything, and going into relationship centric marketing. That's how we okay. call it. Because yeah. like, I want I want to get away from uh, you know, we get you more revenue, we get you more sales, we get you more deals done. You know, right. I want to go totally into relationships because I'm yeah, uh, like I'm, I'm seeing things that Netflix is doing, that Airbnb Airbnb is doing is like yeah walking halfway to the customers not waiting customers to come to them that uh, yeah yeah exactly and, and right. i think it's coming slowly to the to the b2b uh, space and the companies that get out in front of it will be the ones that succeed because they'll they'll blaze the trail for it and you'll see the you'll see the difference in the way people interact with them i think you already see it to some extent of, of companies that are very active or thoughtful about having multiple employees like, like y'all do, yeah. like having multiple employees <clears throat> posting content under their personal brands that kind of by proxy pulls attention back to the company brands. And, uh, you know, so people are like, oh, okay, now I'm associating these people with the company. And so you already have like your human face out there before you ever have that first conversation. Companies that don't do that, like they just have a bunch of people behind the curtain, right? <laughs> like no yeah. one knows who the people are. Uh, and, so. and that's and that's like the tragic story because like companies are uh, people are the ones that are building the products are, are doing right. the services, right. you know, like why are you hiding them since you already hire them and you know, you believe in their work. Yeah, I will never understand that. Yeah, very strange. It's kind of an odd approach <laughs> to, for your first touch point to be with somebody you've never you, you have no idea who they are, you know, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and you know, like um, you got me thinking about thing, like, build it and they will come. There, there was a meme. Yeah, we we posted on the company profile, which is like I figured out. Okay, people started to mimic this as well. It was like a battle on the field, and there are two warriors from the winning party, like saying, "Hey guys, uh, hey man, do you think somebody is alive? You know, <laughs> and, and uh, how can we check?" And the other guy say. Build it and they will come and they start. To, <laughs> oh, we're gonna kill them as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah, that theory, man. That's call it field of dreams theory, like from the movie. You know, it's just yeah. it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It may for companies that have massive VC backing or whatever, and they can just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. But for small companies, doesn't happen. You, know, you got to build it. Yeah, agreed. Okay, we're uh, close to the end. Uh, so tell me, Chris, is there something that we didn't mention that you want to say or something to say for the end? Yeah, just if people want to reach out, they want to find out a little bit more about what I do, the best place to, to find me is on LinkedIn. It's my home away from home. I'm there pretty much all the time. Uh, the company's name is Zanate Ventures. So it's <clears throat> Z-A-N-A-T-E uh, Ventures. And that's the website. Uh, Zanate is Spanish for grackle, like the black birds uh, that are all over the place. Uh, they're everywhere here in Central Texas. They're really sc scrappy, kind of resilient. That's what I identify with in terms of how I do business for my clients. And that's where the name comes from. So if you want to check out the website, they can there. Or uh, yeah, find me on LinkedIn. Reach out. Let's chat. If, uh, if we're connected and, and we haven't really had a conversation, please reach out. And send me a DM. Um, I'm going to get to know all my connections better. And I'm uh, going to be much more intentional about that going forward. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm recommending you do that as well. Like, Chris is a great guy. And at least you'll have, a, you know, uh, a good conversation 
yeah, you know, sure. with lots of different perspectives. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, All guys, right. thanks, thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks for being uh, a no, great guest uh, and chatting with me here about about lots of uh, different topics. Uh, I'm sure we we can, uh, you know, uh, in the future do this again yeah, and you know see how things are <laughs> developing. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully positively. <laughs> so. Let's go. <hope>. Let's go. <laughs> okay, guys. So this was uh, another episode of the Funky Marketing Show. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, as always, uh, keep it funky. <laughs>